This video is going to make some people that I respect a great deal quite annoyed because I want to use it to argue that Rust should not include an effect system with the proviso that my understanding is incomplete. And so hopefully there will be someone who will be able to respond to this and uh, explain why I'm wrong. I've got a couple of bits of rationale that I will explain uh, and sort of make my case. Uh, but let's first discuss what an effects system is. We're familiar with the idea that variables have data types in programming languages. I can uh, do things like addition with numbers that I can't do with text. A data type describes the operations that are valid. You could think of a function being sort of typed in a similar way in the sense that I could define a function or even let's say you know, a block of code as having the ability to connect to the network and say, well, certain blocks of code or certain functions are in some way typed differently if they interact with the operating system via a syscall or have the ability to panic, that is to crash. Uh, and other sections that are different in some way because it's impossible for them to crash are in a sense typed differently. And I'm squirming a little bit as I tried to use the word typed because what I'm referring to is an effect system. Or at least this is the way that I understand that type theorists use the term an effects system. This has been incorporated in some, I, uh, I don't mean this in a derogatory term, but this has been incorporated in some research languages like Idris uh, from the Haskell ecosystem and some other places as well. And they are proving to be very interesting for languages that purport to provide reliability, robustness, and those are things that Rust likes. So why would I not say that this is a, uh, something to include in, in Rust? And the reason comes down to trade-offs or uh, and the fact that my understanding is that an effect system would come with it. It, it would incur a very large cost and uh, that is going to be uh, related to, but even worse than what we see in the async ecosystem. Primarily, an effect system will color all of our functions different shades of red, blue, green, orange, whichever metaphor that you want to use. There'll be some functions which will be uh, uh, marked in a particular color and, and, and others will not, and they will no longer be able to interoperate. This is going to cause a great deal of frustration, potentially even fracturing within the community or subsets of the community. In the same way that it's sort of annoying if you want to pull in one dependency and then you see that bolted onto this dependency, you also have the rest of Tokyo and every, all of its dependencies and suddenly you have brought in half of uh, the async world and you've discovered that over here. And I'm very curious as to see whether or not that that uh, that I am wrong. If that trade-off doesn't exist, or at least that weakness doesn't exist, and then that's fine. The other thing is that maybe it's a good thing that it exists because there are some people who are writing performance critical code that want to guarantee that for sections of that code that their program will not panic that will their program will not crash. They may also wish to describe their, they must guarantee that their library does not access the network. They were to sort of say that we are writing a compression library and so we don't need to write to the file system or we don't need to read from the file system. These are properties that would be nice as a library author to, up, to guarantee and also as a consumer of third party libraries would be really nice to have. And so here is maybe a kind of partial solution that probably people have already talked about, and that would be a more heavily heavy use of the trait system. Specifically, 
I think that most of the advantages of effects could be uh, create, established through an extensive use of market traits that have been already used to provide similar capabilities or denote similar capabilities of some types uh, within Rust, specifically uh, send and sync. Mark types as being able to be uh, sent across threads or shared between threads. And there's another marker type sized, which is so prevalent that in fact it's sort of invisible in source code. Uh, sized is implemented by almost everything except if it's not. And so there's a special syntax, which uh, means that this type is what we call unsized, or it does not implement sized. And those are things otherwise known as dynamically sized types. The consequence of a type implementing size is that it's placed on the stack uh, rather than on the heap. This is something that is useful to, for people who care about memory layout because its size in memory, the number of bytes that are stored, are actually known by the compiler. My suspicion is that we can actually use standard library and we can introduce a new set of traits. Maybe we could mark things as impossible to panic, or we could say that we don't access the file system. We don't invoke any syscalls. We have no unsafe in my code. We say that the code that I have written does not in any unsafe code. And this would need to be worked from the bottom up, uh, all the way from the, it would be a very big job, but I think that if the benefits will outweigh the cost, the work will get done. Essentially, it's an economic problem now. If, uh, if we agree on the syntax. So there are definitely issues with what I've suggested, but let me first talk about unsafe because there will be some people who think, da, 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 da. Tim, we already have the unsafe keyword. It already does pollute the, the language. But unsafe isn't quite enough. The whole point of, and so we could mark a function as being unsafe. So this in some sense is an effect, but we also, can and almost we can by design wrap an unsafe function in a safe function this is how lots of the standard library is written it's how every what we call a uh, syscrate so every interface with a c library is written whereby the uh the unsafe wrapper sorry the unsafe code which interacts with the library or the operating system is wrapped by some safe interface that is exposed to the rust side and the Rust side is unaware that unsafe blocks are used under the hood. What the argument is that an effect system would push all the way through and essentially be unable to be masked. So if unsafe exists anywhere in the call stack, through any of your dependencies, it would be, you would get a loud compiler warning, probably a compiler error, in the in the in the code that you write and uh, if you have said that actually i need this section of code to not panic or oh, sorry to not use unsafe there is a big caveat and i think there's a lot of design um still needs to go and people have probably already discounted the trait system for one particular reason that i'm going to say now which is that traits are associated with types and i'm talking about being associated with functions and so, uh, and what does it mean to say that we could have a type that is, uh, let's say, panicky, when what we're really talking about is behavior? And I want to sort of squint a little bit and say we already have baked into the type system concepts that the compiler doesn't actually understand that are higher level than the software or its implementation, such as string being guaranteed to be UTF-8. This is a high level construct above its internal representation. I wonder whether or not we can get a lot of the advantages of an effect system by leveraging tra the, the trait system, specifically marker traits, without needing to introduce even more syntax or sort of more uh, cognitive load onto the user, or onto learners of Rust. 
Okay, this video is long enough. I'm sure that I've made several errors in my understanding of effects and effect systems, uh, and also the limitations and benefits of uh, Rust types or trait systems. So please do correct me. Um, remember, though, this is the internet, so uh, there are humans listening. But you're very welcome to use the comment section in whichever form that you'd like. Uh, I'm available on Twitter and the Fediverse, as well as by email or even the comment section. So a whole bunch of others. <laughs> very keen to hear your feedback. Take care.